Hello and welcome to this video. This video is going to be called Five Contemporary Guitarists That You Should Be Listening To. Right? That's a bold statement. <laughs> okay, so um, I have a little bit of a sort of um, insecurity about my channel. And I've mentioned it before is that I don't cover enough contemporary music. You know, there's so much fusion out there going on. There's so much prog going out on there. Out going on out there, if I get my words out, there's so much experimental music, you know, and you can go on Bandcamp and stick in, you know, jazz, funk, fusion, metal, and suddenly you, the whole world will open up for you. Um, as a professional musician, um, my listening time, the time I get to sit down and actually listen to music is, is, is quite small. Um, when I do this channel, I am relying on my listening history that goes back 40 years. When I was younger and I would literally go in my bedroom and that night I would listen to like 12 albums, you know, before I went to bed. And so the albums I cover I know really, really well. One of the reasons I don't cover contemporary music so much, and there are a number of reasons, is that it's, it's very difficult too, you know. And when I do go down that avenue, I find myself drawn to things which would be outside of jazz fusion or prog or, or rock or any of those things. Um, so I thought, I'm always thinking actually of ways of bringing contemporary music in. Now the reason why I can't listen to loads and loads of contemporary music is because I'm making it, you know, I'm making music all the time. So I thought I'm going to talk about five guitarists, although I've pushed that, <laughs> pushed that, um, boundary a little bit but I want to talk about five guitarists that I work with that I think you should have a listen to now of course this is completely biased these are all my friends they're all fantastic musicians um, but I, I've picked a list where I think you know followers of this channel will be blown away by some of the musicians I'm about to tell you about and I think it will be very interesting for them to for you to go and check those out because I work with them and, I'm, I'm, and I have some sort of contact with them, well, I work with four, there's one right at the end that I haven't, uh, but I think it's worth a mention. Um, obviously, if there's interest in this, I can go further and I can get into quite a lot of detail because I know these guys. So, five contemporary jazz, rock, fusion, prog, or whatever you want to call it, guitarists that I think you should go and check out, right? I'm not saying they're the best in the world, I'm saying I think you should check them out because they're doing something uniquely brilliant. That's the way I'm going to describe it. So, the first guitarist I, uh, on my list is the fantastic B.D. Lenz and here's his album Manifesto, okay? Um, B.D. is an uh, American guitarist. I think he's based out in, in or around New York, I'm not sure. Um, twice a year he comes over to the UK uh, and he tours and he gigs and in coming over to the UK I've hooked up with him a number of times uh, and, uh, and worked with him a few times and it's been very very enjoyable um, I actually made an album with him with my band Conda Buffer that was completely improvised on the spot and BD just came in and was just incredible and um, the last time he was over we did some gigs uh, he's coming over in April I'm going to be doing another gig with him so um, if anyone's really interested in what he's doing, and I'm sure you will be if you check the album out, uh, we could do something in the future on this channel with BD. I would love to do that. Now, the album I've picked to represent him is this one, Manifesto, right? Which I think really does um, what it says on the tin. It is a manifesto of what BD Lenz does. So, what does BD do? Well, BD is a very schooled jazz fusion guitarist. This is why he's first on the list. I think, you know. Um, fans of this channel this is the easiest one to go for it, it's it's straight down the line fusion his influences would be and it's quite apparent listening to it his influences of Pat Metheny, John Schofield, Mike Stern especially Mike Stern but BD has got another element that I absolutely love you know and it really is apparent on this album he's got that rock thing going on you know so many fusion guys are playing fusion because it's commercial, you know, because um, it, 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 it's more accessible, right? With BD, I feel that this is a rock guy through and through, right? But with immense amount of jazz chops, okay? 
compositionally, I find him really interesting. Um, some of the stuff is is very listenable, right? Now, we've discussed this on this channel many a time. You know, um, I've discussed the Fusac, the dreaded Fusac, you know, uh, which is sort of the jazz funk fusion. Um, <clears throat> some of it I do like. I really do like Sanborn. I think Sanborn's brilliant at it. I love Marcus Miller. I think he's brilliant at it. But so often the albums um, in that style are... Uh, We've criticised here for being a bit dull. Um, BD understands that style, but it's just one of the elements in there. And those that's really, I think, coming from people like Sam Bourne and Marcus Miller and Mike Stern and Pat Metheny. That's in there, but he subverts it all the time. There's some incredible things he does on this where you sort of get those sort of really colourful chords that you get in jazz, you know, jazz fusion funk. You know, with the hits, you know, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. and then suddenly he about face, and you've got this weird proggy harmonic minor jam. Um, and also, the thing I love about BD, especially on this album, is on on the tracks, right? He really solos. This is my problem with 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 Fusac, right? If they play the tunes, a lot of the times they're funky tunes, I like them, but they don't solo, they don't get off the ground. On here, there is a ton of space, you know, there's like about two or three drum solos on here, but BD really flies, and so often he'll come at it from a more jazz angle, it's not total jazz, but a more Pat Metheny clean tone angle, and you'll hear him do a solo, and then he amps the distortion it, and suddenly he's flying in with this much dirtier sound. Um, I think this is an excellent modern fusion album. You know, um, I, I don't think BD is trying to push towards the avant-garde. I think he really understands all the modern influences and approaches that exist across the whole field of jazz. And he very cleverly, compositionally, puts all those things together. So it's, it, it's always surprising. I've had this on the car, in the car this week. And it's just going round and round because it's a fantastic album and you find more and more depth. So, BD Lens, go and check this guy out and, you know, start with that album manifesto. Right, um, the next guy is on the prog side, right? Uh, he's, a, he's an absolutely fantastic guitarist. Um, and the guitarist, this is just jump straight in, the guitarist is a guy called Luke Machine. Right, he's played with Francis Dunnery, he's played with The Tangents. Uh, I think he's about to go out with Carnatica. Um, he's an absolutely excellent prog guitarist that, for me, has got a ton of um, influences coming from rock music, like Steve Vai and all those guys, but he's also got influences coming from fusion and also neo soul, funk, jazz and all those stuff and he just ties it together absolutely beautifully. Now, um, this might be blowing my own trumpet, but the, the album where he just plays absolutely incredibly on is this album, Kiyama. Now this is a band that I formed, I'll show you, here we are, there we are in the middle. Luke stood next to me, you can see me, you know, clean shaven, you know, on here I am, oh, I, I can never do this, here I am, and there's Luke here. Um, and I just think Luke absolutely flies on this album, and he does everything in a prog context that you would want a guitarist to do. There's moments where he is playing with such virtu virtuosity and, and um, fluidity, it's absolutely mind-boggling. But there's also moments where he really plays um, space. You know, um, he's absolutely fantastic guitarist. Um, I think he's going to emerge over the next few years as being one of the dominant prog guitarists. And the reason why that will happen is because his influences are so much wider than just Steve Hackett and Dave Gilmore. So, um, although there's a ton of Dave Gilmore influence on here, I think as well. So that yeah, that's a, an our Maimon Kiyama. It's called Sign of Four. Uh, it also features Rob Reed. Uh, incredible prog composer, producer, and Dylan Thompson on vocals. I'm, 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 it's an album I'm very proud of, and uh, it represents a fantastic guitarist, Luke Machine. All right, so the next guy I'm going to talk about, I've had a long association with. I've played on many albums with this guy. 
I think he's one of the most advanced, courageous composers and guitarists working in the world today. Um, I've picked two albums by him, not one, because he, you should go and check out both of these, um, which um, I'm not on. I thought, you know, I've, I've picked one album that I'm on, and there's another album I'm on that, uh, that I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, but uh, I've picked two albums that I'm not on. Um, and the, the uh, guitarist is, of course, I've mentioned it before, the incredible Fai Jan Zek, right? So Fai is uncategorizable, I think, okay? He's coming out of metal. There's a very strong Steve Vai influence there, but the Steve Vai influence is really coming out of flexible, little green men, you know, uh, He's got a very strong Frank Zappa influence. There's very strong modern classical influences there. There's also dance music, electronic music. And it's all tied together with this sort of esoteric mysticism, which, you know, is absolutely compelling. He works on an absolutely um, epic scale. His guitar playing is, I would describe as somewhere between Sean Lane and Eric Dolphy, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's so unique. It's so incredibly virtuoso. His compositions are, are, are so incredibly difficult to play, but never in a showboaty, prog metal way. Always because that's what the composition requires, much more like Frank Zappa. Um, he works with some of the best musicians on the, in the world. Marco Miniman, Mike Keneally, Brian Bella, uh, Lale Larson, incredible keyboardist. Um, a good album to start with, which I think is his sort of most popular album, is Soul of Flair, which is sort of prog jazz fusion. Um, this is an absolutely fantastic album, but I must bring this one up, which is his absolute masterpiece. And I'm afraid my copy has been eaten by my dog. I managed to prize it out of his mouth but is this one here reality is my plaything this album took five over 10 years to make right and it is just a huge epic that really covers everything it's his, his old world it's it's an absolute masterpiece of an album you know uh, which which features a ton of really incredible musicians so yeah Fai Anzek, I really want to get him on my channel and I think um, the fans of this channel need to go and check him out uh, and I'm sure you're going to have your minds blown uh, but really dig deep because there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, now the next guy I'm going to talk about isn't actually a guitarist but the way he plays I believe that guitarists should go and listen to him. He's actually a bass player. Um, I've got a trio, um, which has made, I, th I think we made five or six albums now. It's an improvising, avant-garde, electronica, jazz, fusion, prog trio with Fi, with the incredible bass player, Steve Lawson. I pulled out here the first Ley Lines album. So Ley Lines is the name of the band that I have with Steve and Fi to represent Steve Lawson. Steve Lawson is not only one of the greatest bass players on the planet, definitely one of the most advanced improvising bass players on the planet, but he's also an incredibly interesting musician that's not only pushed the bass to the outer limits, but has actually pushed the way we consider creative music making to the outer limits. He's been a huge influence on me, not just playing wise, um, and he's really got me to rethink improvisation and the role of improvisation in creative music. But he's also really made me rethink how a creative musician can operate in the modern world. Um, Steve, Steve um, basically can create whole sound worlds just with his bass and his setup. And he has samples and effects. He has lots of different loops going on. And he basically, everything's improvised, he uses no backing tracks. And he could create whole soundscape compositions. Really coming out of, I would say, people like Robert Fripp and Brian Eno and David Torn. But he's taken that aspect, 
really much further out than they ever have. I don't think. I think, and also solo bass players like like Michael Mannering, he's he's, he's met, taken that as well and put this into to, into a way of playing which is virtuoso without showing off. It really puts the music first. That's undeniably the thing I've learned from Steve is is to uh, value the creative aesthetic part of music more than getting bogged down into the technical. Seems like a really obvious thing to say. Um, why have I included him on this video? Because just before I made this video, I was watching um, a video of him performing at the London Bass Show and he comes in and it's it occupies the world of guitar as much as it occupies the world of bass. It also occupies the world of electronica and um, uh, sampling and looping you know it, he's it is though he's taken the boundaries of the instrument and and taken it apart now the way steve works he makes a lot of albums like literally he's made hundreds of albums so if you really want to understand what steve does you need to pop over to his band camp i think um, and have a look there you'll find for quite a few albums i'm on there you know uh, one of my um Favourite albums is a duo album that I made with Steve, uh, where we really captured an as aspect of my playing um, which hasn't really been captured on any other album, where I'm going much more deeper into jazz playing and avant-garde playing. And the reason is, is because of his working methods. I would really like, again, to return to Steve on my channel at some point, uh, and it may be that Ley Lines needs to, you know, pop up here at some point and do something you know we haven't done anything for a long time uh, but uh, that's Steve Lawson so that's my fourth one so who's the last one on the list well it's the one guy I've not played with I have had a few conversations with him on Facebook the reason being because when I saw him he absolutely blew my mind and I, I found him on Facebook I've made friends with him and I've chatted, it, chatted with him many a time and I really think, you know, if I want to point out a guitarist working in the world today at the moment, which is who's really pushing the envelope, um, not just technically, but aesthetically, it would be the guitarist Roy Marchbank. All right. I haven't got anything to hold up here, but go and Google him, find him and check him out. Now, when you find him, what will um, blow you away to start off with is the sheer speed he's playing the guitar at, right? Um, this is where I actually came across him because there was a, a discussion on the internet w which where um, a number of people were saying that it, it wasn't real, that he wasn't actually playing at that speed, that this was a guitarist that had been sped up, that it wasn't humanly possible to play at that speed. Uh, and this relates to my other video that's coming up about Jaco Pastor is using my ears as a musician and listening to the the quality of what he was doing, I knew, I knew it was for real. Um, but these also told me something else, that once you got back past the speed, he was also doing other things that were absolutely incredible. The speed, I think, is a byproduct of him really rethinking the way we actually pick the guitar. He's actually got a special pick he uses, which almost looks like a pebble. He's really th rethought the way you pick the guitar, the, the, the sound the guitar makes, and he's, he has a really strong influence, sorry, sorry, interest and influence of sort of Eastern European folk music, all right? And, and I think those sort of, that sort of gypsy music, the sort of Bulgarian wedding bands like Ivor Papasov, which is someone I need to cover on this channel, I think, all that sort of stuff, has actually motivated him to try and play the guitar in the way he does. Um, I've spoken to him a number of times and um, the depth of his approach is quite astonishing. Um, so I really wanted to give him, you know, a little bit of a profile on this video. And so, you know, um, go and check him out. I'll say no more. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few comments of people looking at him in disbelief, but that's not the thing that's not why i mentioned him go and check out his music go and check out what he's doing right and put your put these on right and have a really good listen that's so important so that's it so i'm just going to recap again and i'll put them all 
in the in the uh, this bit below. Uh, so the first guitarist I spoke was the uh, American jazz fusion guitarist B.D. Lenz, and then I spoke about the British uh, prog guitarist um, Luke Machine. Then I talked about the insane world of Fayan Zek. We talked about Steve Lawson, improvising bass player extraordinaire, and the last was the Scottish virtuoso Roy Marchbank. So I hope you go and check all these people out. Let's have a conversation about it in the comments below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I can do it, you know, because, you know, there is a world of musicians out, out there that I know I'm connected with, and I'd love to give them some profile because this is what makes the world go round, especially the musical world. I'm done. See you soon. Thank you very much.